today I'm going to share with you how I design encounters in D&D Adventures using a technique I call modulating tension. By the end of this video, you'll have some techniques that you can use to design adventures that are more fun and engaging for your players. Hey, Luke Hart here. I have been a Dungeon Master since high school, and I make weekly D&D videos to help Dungeon Masters run awesome games. So, if you're looking to level up your Dungeons & Dragons game, hit that subscribe button down below and click the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Alright, adventure design and modulating tension. This video is going to have two parts to it. First, I'm going to explain this concept to you, and then I'm going to pull up an adventure I created to demonstrate it. Now let me ask you a question. Have you ever played an adventure that was just combat after combat after combat, just killing waves and waves of enemies with no end? You know, you kill some goblins in the first room and then kill some goblins in the hallway and then you go to another room and there are some goblins there and you kill more goblins and then, oh, finally you get to another room and guess what? There are hobgoblins. Or maybe an adventure that was all social interactions, you know, talking with NPCs, just four hours of talking with people. Or maybe the entire adventure was simply exploration, just poking around and discovering things and finding stuff. Now here's the thing, there's nothing wrong with doing adventures that way, but they're not going to be as engaging and dynamic and fun for your players as designing adventures that use a mix of all of those elements. And why is that? Here's the thing, combats are very high tension, they're very fast paced, they're very dramatic, and they take a lot of energy out of you. An adventure with only combat is always go, 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 and it kind of drains the players and the DM, and it takes their energy, it leaves them mentally fatigued to an extent. What generally tends to work better is mixing those fast-paced, high-tension combats with other game elements such as social interactions, talking with NPCs, and exploration. Because those things tend to be a lot less tense, a lot less fast-paced, and it gives you time to kind of relax and regain your energy for the next combat. And that's all modulating tension really is. I, I suppose it's just a fancy term for changing up the pacing of your game. And as I said, what it does is it allows you to kind of take a little bit of a mental break after a crazy long combat. You get to talk with some NPCs, you get to explore the dungeon a little bit, and lowering that tension and lowering that pace makes the next combat that much more exciting. Hey, real quick, let me know down in the comments if there's any special techniques that you use when you're designing the various encounters that are going to be in an adventure. Oh, by the way, I am calling these combats, but really they're just encounters that have the potential of becoming combats if the players decide to make them combats. And I think that you and I both know that in most groups, they're almost assuredly going to turn into combats. And here's the other really important thing too. When you mix combats with social interaction, with exploration, not only are you changing the pacing and making things more interesting, but you're also ensuring that you have a variety of content that will appeal to different player types. Because, you know, not every player likes the exact same thing. And providing this variety in your adventures ensures that all of your players are getting something that they like out of the game. Hey, if you found this information useful, please hit that thumbs up button and share it with somebody who might find this information valuable. Alright, what I'm going to do now is pull up an adventure that I created to illustrate to you what I'm talking about. Alright, so this adventure is called My Dear Missing Mother. And... I'm just going to give you a basic walkthrough of it at a kind of a high level and I'm just going to show you the different scenes and how they were kind of designed around this idea of modulating tension. So when they start off the adventure, they arrive in this town and they need to do a little bit of investigation. So this is considered a social interaction. Um, they're going to poke around a little bit and get some leads. And they get a lead telling them that this Gabriel Ereskin is somebody they need to track down and find. That He knows a little bit about what has gone on. Basically, this town was attacked by undead, and they're trying to figure out what's happening. Um, my dear missing mother, the whole idea of that is that one of the player characters' mother was is missing, and the players are now trying to find her. So a little bit of backstory there, but I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail on that, because that's not really the point. So they are tracking down this Gabriel dude, and I'm going to skip over large portions of this. They don't really illustrate what I want to talk about, um, but there's a lot more stuff here. They go into the swamp, the swamp of the Mirror of Dead Men, and they find Gabriel basically up a tree being attacked by ghasts, and so they have to fight these ghasts. They rescue Gabriel. Um, there's, so that was a combat, right? And then after the combat, they talk with Gabriel. There's a social interaction here. Oh my gosh, check this out. My cat 
just like climbed up onto the back of my chair. So Squeaky is now going to be in this video with us. Maybe he will have some DM tips for us all. But anyway, let's continue on. So they're going to talk with Gabriel. They're going to find out that he didn't actually do anything, um, but he knows where they might need to go. There's this tower nearby. And I'm just going to zoom through this, right? Um, so they go to this tower, and in the first level of this tower, there is a massive Utiug. Um, I actually made this a unique and special one to make it a little bit harder because my players were going to stomp the... Oh, you know what? So in these notes, I actually have there being three of them or something, but I ended up uh, customizing this Utiug. Squeaky's now climbing down. I ended up customizing this Utiug to make there be one of them, and it had like extra tentacles and extra attacks and stuff. It was really cool. Whatever. Um, that's not the point. But there was a combat, so... Um, and then in the tower, they would explore this tower, go up in the tower, and they would find um, some information, and they would find this homunculus that was trapped in like a drawer, I believe he was trapped in, or a box or something. And then they, they rescued him, and they made friends with him. Then another social interaction scene. Uh, they got to interact with this homunculus, who had a really cool voice for and was really, really fun to play. And then the situation would lead them to go under the crypts, into the crypts underneath Inyarv's tower, and I got some information describing those crypts. Uh, there's like some blah, blah, blah. I'm just trying to skip ahead here. Okay, here we go. So there's this chamber where they end up fighting some beholder zombies and ogre zombies. And so there's a little combat for you. That was fun. And then after that, there are some captive cells that they come upon. And in these captive cells, there are some people that they can talk with and get some information about where to find um, Lear's missing mother. And so there you go. Combat to social interaction. And so, oh, by the way, back up at the tower when they were like finding, when they, before they meant the homunculus, that was an exploration scene where they had to poke around and find information about who, who could possibly be sending undead against this town. So there was an exploration scene back there. Captive cells, this is a social interaction. And then they go to some sarcoph sarcophagus halls where they end up fighting some gas and mummies. There's a nice combat for you. And I'm just cruising through all of this. I'm not really giving a lot of details. I'm aware of that. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this available for download so that you guys can get this adventure and look through it on your own. Um, that way you can kind of like you know get a better look at it than my little fast cursory overview. So there's a shrine room. Okay, so they're going to poke around in here. This is a exploration scene. A necromancer bedroom, right? There are some notes about this. They can poke around an exploration scene. A suspicious hallway. This ends up having traps in it. So they get to do some trapping stuff. And then there is this thing right here was a Glabrazu who was deceiving them, trying to make them think that he was an angel and to get them to take their armor off and stuff like that. And one of the players did, and then it attacked, and it was really cool. This actually almost wiped them. This was a really tough battle for them. I got some notes about that, but again, combat scene, right? And then I got, so they're actually getting much closer to the Necromancer that's behind this all. And so I believe I got some more exploration scenes that I have as they begin poking around. Here's a scriptorium that has some skeletons that are like writing stuff. And then if they just, I think I, if they disturb the skeletons or something, my cat is just having a field day back here climbing up and down. Um, if they disturb the skeletons, then ghosts come out and like attack them. So a little bit of combat going on there. And then here's a study. So they come across this study, and this is an exploration scene. There's stuff to be found here. They poke around, and they get some information that actually helps them in the quest. And then there's some more exploration. There's some bedrooms here. Here they go into these bedrooms. They can get some flasks of holy water and some healing potions. These are things that are going to help them in the adventure. Right? And so you can see here I'm modulating, right? I'm going from combat to inter social interaction to exploration, kind of back and forth. And then here's the main chapel. This is where the necromancer was using like a magic jar. She tries to possess them. And this was a, this was a pretty cool combat. I liked how this turned out. And I, she was possessing one of the, I think she was possessing Dunkel and making him fight against the other heroes. It was pretty cool. And I just got a bunch of notes here. Um, so that's really all... That's, so that's really all I wanted to show you here is just an example of how I did this modulating tension thing and I had social interactions and combats and exploration all kind of mixed into one and the whole idea here was to control the pacing and make this more interesting and dynamic for the players and not to have it all be like go, 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 go combat 
or like boring talky talky too much, you know, and and to have stuff that appealed to a large range of player likes and tastes. So again, I will put this down below in like the description as a link, probably over to Google Drive, where you guys can download this and take a look at it yourself if you find that helpful. Um, I made maps for this as well. I will include those in the download now. The maps aren't like, they're just on graph paper. They're not super special. So don't don't get your hopes up. It's just a dude drawing on graph paper, okay? But if you find that helpful, I'll put that down there for you. Oh, by the way, I am giving away a copy of Morning Canyon's Tome of Foes to one of my subscribers. So if you want to get in on that giveaway, click that link down in the description or in the pinned comment. Remember, I make Dungeons & Dragons videos every week with the goal of helping Dungeon Masters run awesome games. So if you want to level up your game, click that subscribe button down below. As always, if you have any questions about being a dungeon master or maybe you have issues in the game and you just need some advice, please let me know down in the comments. I am always happy to help. And until next time, let's play D&D. &D.